Ready? I think we're going to go for it. People may join us along the way. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Joy Milner. I am a wellness professional that started an organization basically about nine years ago. I decided to take my passions of wellness, fitness, nutrition, and my incredible blessings in my life and go out into the world and help others that are not as fortunate as I am. So that's basically what I did. I, um, I started an organization. We empower people in low-income neighborhoods throughout St. Louis to get healthy. It's called the Fit and Food Connection. I will give it to you at the end as well. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on technology, even though we're in a very immersed world here. I'm very simple. I like to get to the point. I'm not doing a lot of interaction with the computer, but I kind of wanted to go through what we're gonna do for the next 45 minutes, and you all can put your questions um, down in the chat room, and then we'll have time at the end of our session for any questions. I'll also give my contact information again at the end. So it's Joy Milner, it's the Fit and Food Connection. You can reach me at info, I-N-F-O, at fitandfoodconnection.org, or you can check out our website at www.fitandfoodconnection.org. What I'd like to do over the next 45 minutes is to, first of all, start with a breathing and stretch session that takes about two minutes. You all can opt out of it if you choose to. I just know that you're probably here for the most part because you're interested in getting healthier and learning about nutrition. You cannot get healthy if you're stressed. If we are stressed, which we all are, at a very high rate right now during this pandemic. Our body is physically producing something cord called cortisol. And it's, all, it's as though we're eating Cheetos. And so our body doesn't really know the difference. So especially during this time, it's really important to reduce our stress levels. If we are going to get healthy, it's imperative. So I just wanted to spend a couple minutes just breathing and just stretching out our neck a little bit and just kind of relaxing us. It always seems to help our day and overall in life in general, make people feel better. So if you're choosing to opt out of it, go for it. If you're not, we're just gonna sit in our chair. You can choose to close your eyes. I just want you to breathe, assess where you are. Are you breathing shallow? Are you breathing heavy? How are you feeling today? Just checking in with yourself. I ultimately wanna see if you can really expand your breaths. So starting with possibly a two count inhale, a two count exhale, moving into a four count inhale, four count exhale, and ultimately, which is very difficult, moving into a six count inhale, six count exhale. Just taking a minute to just check out from life for a minute, appreciate what blessings we do have in our world. See if you can send your breath to all different parts of your body. So are you getting your lungs? Are you getting your belly? Are you getting your backside? So keep breathing deeply. If you can, I'd love for you to breathe in something positive on the inhale, some thoughts, some blessings, some candles, some family member, something that makes you feel wonderful. And then on those exhales, I really just want you to send clutter out of your being, some stress, some fog that's in your brain, just clearing out anything that's really keeping us from reaching our wellness goals, our goals in life in general. While you're doing that, I want you to drop your right ear to your right shoulder, drop your chin and bring it over your left ear to your left shoulder and just continue your breathing as you stretch out your neck, just letting go. We're gonna do that one more time. And continuing the breathing, I just want you to bring your shoulders up to your ears on the exhale. I mean, on the inhale, on the exhale, drop your shoulders. Letting go of stress, letting go of tension, just preparing to learn. Give me a couple big shoulder rolls up and back as slow as you can. Give me a big shoulder rolls up and forward. And then lastly, two more of the biggest deep breaths you have. So breathe in everything wonderful, exhale out anything negative. And one more time, inhale and exhale. Okay, if you ever need to feel like and any day you need to add a little peace in your life, that kind of a, just a stretching breathing meditation always helps me. So 
All right. Let's talk about several things. I'm just going to go through all kinds of different um, different things that are really important to me and the way that I teach. And hopefully my goal is at the end of this session, you're going to take something really positive with you, something that you can really bring into your everyday life, something that will impact you and change you in a positive way. So if that is the case, then I've definitely done my job. Um, my passion is empowering people to get healthy. We are all beaten down by this big, crazy, scary world. And I teach small changes yield big results. So I feel like that's gonna be the message that you will continue to see throughout my talk is it doesn't take a lot. It takes a little bit, small steps to reach this big goal. And we really all can do it. And I don't think it's as hard as most people think it is if we change the way that our mind works. So our body is a calculator. It's that simple. If you go to bed at night and you have taken in more than you have burned, you're gonna gain weight. If you have burned more than you've taken in, you're going to lose weight. So I teach all of these small changes. For example, if I exercise, which is key, if I decide to do 20 jumping jacks or go for a walk with a friend or family member, whatever, all the different ways that I can move my body and exercise, I may burn 25 or 50 calories. Then I decide that I'm going to put my salad dressing on the side of my salad instead of pouring it on there. I'm saving myself right there another 25 calories. So hopefully at the end of this session, you'll create an awareness of all these little things and it really is impactful and it really does work. So at the end of my day, I may have taken in 200 less calories when I think about what I've burned and my conscious choices and you don't even realize that you're actually going to start losing weight and you don't feel like you're doing it. So it doesn't take a massive diet, taking things away from your life that you love. It doesn't take exercising for five hours at a time. It really is the mindset, especially through this pandemic, which is the focus of this session when we're all extremely stressed, that you can really make these small changes and they will add up to just really huge results in your body. Uh, knowledge is power. So we all have different health goals. Um, and the purpose of this session is just to set you up for success, make you feel healthier, and make you understand that you control this. Nobody else does. Our brain, our body controls so much of what happens to us. If we believe bad things are going to happen, if we're not thinking positively, it's amazing how much in our surrounding really does affect us. If we feel confident, if we feel strong, if we say today's the day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to set a small goal or I'm going to do something, it's amazing how we can do it. So it's a lot of it is turning on that button within ourselves that say we empower ourselves. It's not anyone around us that can really control that. It really does make a big difference. So keep in mind small changes yield big results. I want to start with a nutrition label. And again, I'm not putting it on the screen because if technology happens, it's on every item of food, which we'll talk about. It's a basic nutrition label. So if you want to, if you have a pen and paper, hopefully you want to write some things down. You can always reach out to me for anything. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about a nutrition label and how to read it, basically. Um, every single nutrition label says serving size, servings per container, and calories. That is in every single nutrition label. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. The very first thing that you see says serving size, serving per container, and then how many calories, okay? This is some oatmeal, which we'll talk about. And it happens to have 150 calories, but it's got 17 servings per container. So that's really important. I know that sounds silly, and sometimes it's smaller things that are easy to understand, but you have to multiply out those numbers. And I know that sounds silly, but most people that basic knowledge, they don't understand. If there are 100 calories per serving and there are four servings per container, it doesn't matter what you are eating, that's 400 calories, that's not 100 calories. So the bottom line, I'm gonna say right off the bat, we are all eating way too much. Our body needs so much less than what we're taking in. And especially during this pandemic, I know that it's really stressful and some of us are tending to eat more and move less, which doesn't help. But I want you always to remember that. So knowledge is power, understanding what is going into your body. 
you know, look at the labels of the food you're taking in, see how that affects you, see what you think about that. That means that every single number on a nutrition label, every single number is multiplied by the number of servings per container. So the carbohydrates, the calories, the fat, the sodium, the sugar, everything. So when you think about that, you'll realize that we're eating so much more than just one serving. So just starting with that basic rule, um, will help just kind of have you pay attention to what you're taking in. There's apps that will help you. There's things called My Fitness Pal. There's all kinds of apps that you can download that will, you can take a picture of a label and you can, it can add up your things during the day. So there's things that can make your life easier, but just having an awareness of what you're putting into your body is just a basic beginning. I tend to eat high protein, low carbohydrate. That is just something that I teach. Most of us including the low income areas that I spend my time in. Most all Americans are doing four things. We are taking in too much sugar, taking in too much carbohydrates, not drinking enough water and not eating enough vegetables. Those four things alone are pretty common among everybody. So when I talk about nutrition often or talk about a nutrition label, I'm always talking about carbohydrates. Um, I always focus on bringing in less carbohydrates than what we're eating. So let's talk about that, thinking about a nutrition label. The American Heart Association and many entities say that we should be taking in no more than 300 grams of carbohydrates per day. Think about that, start looking at your labels. See if you can play with it one day and say, how many carbohydrates did I take in today? Understanding that you have to look at the number of servings and you have to multiply that number of carbohydrates by what you're eating. I tend to teach very low carbohydrates. So for me, I'd really like the number to be more around 200 and 300 grams of carbohydrates, okay? We'll get into this a lot more. Things that are high in carbohydrates, um, flour, sugar, so anything, pasta, and breads, anything that we tend to eat that is made of rice or flour or sugar um, tends to be higher in carbohydrates. So I'll jump into something right away. I tend to get really sidetracked because I get very excited. So I'll try to stay focused. But for example, let's just talk about flour, bread. There's typically three different types. There's white flour, there is wheat, and then there is whole wheat. So if you're eating a piece of bread that is white flour, wheat flour, or whole wheat flour, it's not gonna be represented in the carbohydrate number because those are all equal in carbohydrates. It will be represented down at the bottom when it says like the vitamins and nutrients because the whole wheat products have a lot more nutrients. So sometimes you're not gonna get the information just from the carbohydrate number. So I can tell you this, white rice and white flour is a really unhealthy source of nutrients. There's pretty much nothing in there. So if you're always choosing between white or wheat, I always say wheat. For example, I would choose brown rice over white rice because what they do is they take a whole wheat or a brown rice, they strip it of all its nutrients and then it becomes the white product without a lot of nutrients at all. So you'll see a lot of things marketed on packages that say this is wheat. It's still white flour. They've added some wheat to it, but it's still white flour. So ultimately, if you really wanna be as healthy as possible, always look for that whole wheat, 100% whole wheat. It would be the first ingredient. So if you're gonna to choose to eat bread or processed foods or anything like that, I would always say go for the product that has 100% whole wheat as opposed to white. It is the same amount of carbohydrates, but it is giving you more nutrients. So from a portion control standpoint, you're still gonna watch the portion, but from a nutrient standpoint, I would always go for the 100% whole wheat product, always. That is the purest and most nutrient dense for sure. So back to the carbohydrate number. Ideally, I'd love to see your carbohydrate grams under 250 or 300 grams a day. So what does that look like? Um, I will, for example, show you two different types of oatmeal. I could spend all day playing grocery store and bring the grocery store to you. There's so many things that we can talk about, but I'll just give you one example. This is um, instant variety pack. So there's lots of different flavors. This is 100% organic steel cut oats. We're not gonna get into oatmeal. Oatmeal is just one of those contradictory subjects. Some people think it's healthy. Some people think it's not healthy. It can be very good for you, this item, 
but also it has to be portion controlled. Um, but I'll give you an example. The carbohydrates are high for oatmeal. Um, this one has 27 grams of carbohydrates, which is not much, but we're usually eating two and three and four grams of carbohydrates. So remember that. If I'm trying to stick to 250 grams of carbohydrates and my first bowl of oatmeal has 775 grams of carbohydrates, I'm already getting way too much. So portion control is really important on that. But let's look at the ingredients which we'll get into a little bit later how important it is to eat from the earth. You can't see this, but there is a very long list here. There's probably 30 different ingredients in here. The first thing is um, rolled oats, which is great, but the second ingredient is cane sugar, and the third ingredient is maple sugar. So there's lots and lots and lots of sugar in this product. It's not really healthy. So we can get into a lot of the other numbers. I just wanted to prove a point to you. This item right here, the label looks the same, although there's only one item in here, and that is steel cut oats. It has one item, which we'll talk about. The less items in an ingredient label, the better. So my point to you is, this is not healthy. Just the same with yogurt. You can get just regular healthy, yogurt, plain yogurt, and add maybe some stevia to it and add some fresh berries. Or you can buy the yogurt that is full of flavorings and sugar that is completely not healthy. So just thinking about as we go through this session, opting to make choices on the items that you're eating, there's always healthier choices. So this has one in the ingredient label. This has about 15 um, or 30 even. And so we really want to make sure that we try to um, keep it as minimal as possible. Um, my website, I'm getting answering a question on chat, is fitfitandfoodconnection.org. So you can always email me at info at info at fitandfoodconnection.org or my email is on my website as well. Um, and I'm happy to always answer these questions for you. This is a lot of information and so I'm really trying to condense it. Um, but so that's just the one point I wanted to make is check out the carbohydrate serving and just kind of play around with the numbers and see if you can really assess in a day how many carbohydrates you're taking in. Um, one little key is under the carbohydrate reading on a nutrient label, there's always something that says dietary fiber. Dietary fiber is really, really healthy and it absolutely minuses out the carbohydrates. So for example, if one item that you're eating has 20 grams of carbohydrates per serving, but it has five grams of dietary fiber listed underneath it, it's really 15 grams of carbohydrate, not 20. So that's just a little trick. It's always nice to look at items that have dietary fiber and they add an extra layer of health that kind of reduces some of the carbohydrate value. Um, I wanna talk about sodium, sugar, and protein briefly. Sodium. No more than 1,500 milligrams per day is kind of the average of what the experts say. So I would pay attention to that, especially in canned vegetables and canned soups. I literally took a can of Trader Joe's chili, turkey chili, out of my cabinet the other day, and I just assumed Trader Joe's was healthy. I honestly never looked at the sodium. It had 800 milligrams per serving of sodium. It's the most I've ever seen. Even when I'm looking at like green beans and high sodium vegetables that have like four and five and 600 grams, I've never seen 800. And it was two servings in the container. So that one can of Trader Joe's chili had the entire 1600 milligram of sodium requirement. So I also am a fitness professional. So I do a lot on getting people off their high blood pressure meds and things like that. There are a lot of people with high blood pressure and sodium is a big indicator of that. So I just want you to start paying attention to the sodium on the things that you're eating. And again, go back to the per serving container, looking at that. If you're suffering from blood pressure issues or if you're concerned about it, it's just something to be aware of. So I personally always buy no sodium cans of vegetables. I always add a pinch of salt myself, no sodium or low sodium. So just be aware when you're looking at canned soups and you're looking at canned vegetables, there's just so much sodium in there and it's really not helping us from a health standpoint. So I don't want you to get bogged down in all these rules and all these things. There's so much to think about. So small changes yield big results. Think about how you can incorporate little changes into your day. Buying a can of low sodium or no sodium green beans is a great option rather than buying a really heavy um, fully salted can of green beans. So just something to be aware of. Um, sugar. 
They say about no more than 20 grams or five tablespoons of sugar daily. Us as Americans, and especially right now through COVID, we are eating way, way, way too much sugar. Um, you can Google if you want to. It comes in a million different forms, things like 30 code words for sugar. There are hundreds of code words for sugar. So high fructose corn syrup, dextrose, maltrose, cane syrup, I could go on and on and on. And what our companies are doing because they wanna sell you their product, they will put on the front of a box of a cereal, no high fructose corn syrup, but their sugar listed in 10 different ways in the same label. So companies are gonna market to you and they're gonna to try to sell you their product to make them taste good and look good. So it's really up to you to kind of have an understanding of what you're putting in your body. Again, just be aware of the sugars that you're putting in your body. Maybe you can educate yourself. I can always send you code words for sugar. We can all Google it and just start paying attention to the ingredient label and see if you can maybe guess how many times sugar is listed. I will go back to this um, because I haven't hit this yet in my notes, but a great goal for days is to try to eat um, items that have five ingredients or less always. If something has 20 and 30 ingredients listed in the label and you cannot pronounce 10 of them or 15 of them, chances are there's something that are really hurting your body. So something like this that has one ingredient in it, steel cut oats, is just a wonderful option. Um, the most, uh, the healthiest people that ever lived were the cavemen that had a spear and they would go around and they would eat off the earth. They ate their meats and their fish and their nuts and their fruits and their vegetables. There was no disease. There was no processing. What's happened now in our society is that all these people take these things, they add things to them that our bodies have no idea how to break down. They're full of chemicals, full of things that our body cannot stand. And unfortunately, we're getting very sick. Our immune systems are lower. And especially during times like the pandemic, it's something to be aware of. I'd love for you to take on a challenge where Maybe you spend a week, a few days a week, literally seeing if you can try to eat things with five ingredients or less and just see how it makes you feel. Often we have allergies in our body and we don't even realize it. So many people walk around feeling really bad, but they're not, they don't know what feeling really good is. So they don't know the difference. So a lot of times we get allergies from the things we're eating. It could be dairy. It could be um, sugar. Um, and sometimes we'll have bloating or we'll have a runny nose and we don't really know what the reason is. So a lot of times it's these processed foods and these sugars that are causing reactions in our body that our body doesn't know what to do with. So if you ever felt like you wanted to test that or just see how your body feels, it would just be a great challenge to just take on the challenge of eating from the earth and see how it makes you feel. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised um, of how good it makes you feel. So lastly, on a label, I wanna talk about protein. It's really complicated. Um, it says that we should be taking in about 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight or per kilogram of body weight realistically. So not to bog you down, I can just simply tell you that we as Americans are not eating near enough protein. I try in a day to be very high protein, low carbohydrate. So I eat a lot of healthy meats, fish, nuts, um, fruits and vegetables, and I try to minimize my carbohydrates as much as possible. I still eat everything I want to. I portion control those things that I know my body doesn't like a lot. I eat a lot of the things I know my body loves. So if I am craving potato chips, which I know my body does not like as much, they're definitely high in sodium and they're higher in carbohydrates. I would t always get my little snack size plastic bag, not even my um, my little lunch bag, I get the snack size. I count out 10 chips, I mindfully eat them, I portion control them and I savor them. So it's back to small changes yield big results. It's truly about at the end of the day, making choices. Tomorrow we may not be here. We have no idea what tomorrow will bring us. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. So you have to live every day like it's your last. If I took away something that you absolutely loved, whether it's chocolate bars or potato chips, that's no way to live. I mean, we're just not guaranteed tomorrow. So if we can really enjoy the things that we love, but understand that we need to portion control those things that maybe our body doesn't like so much, again, those small changes are gonna yield big results. So another great goal to set one day for fun is to never eat out of a big bag in front of you. Always take a bigger bag, portion control it into a smaller bag, even nuts. I love nuts, they're very good for you. 
they have a lot of fat and calories. So I still have to portion control my almonds and my nuts. I'll always count out 20. I will mindfully eat them. I'll portion control them. And it makes such a difference. Um, I often teach, you know, ask my audiences, how many of you take care of a family or a car, or a loved one, things in your life? We all do. When was the last time you put something in this space, right here, your mouth, that was disrespectful? Probably all the time. How many times do we eat when we're not focused, when we're multitasking? So there's no take backs on what goes through this space. So my request for you today would be to just think about practicing what goes through this space, being aware of it, being mindful. Are you savoring every bite? Are you tasting flavors? Um, I even go so far as to tell people to eat on a small little plate and a very small fork. Um, if we're giving ourselves a very huge plate and a very big fork, our bites are gonna be three times as much. So bringing in all those numbers and really lowering the amount that we're bringing in our body makes a huge difference. So get your small portion, get your small fork, be undistracted, you know, try not to have things going on around you that is going to take away from your ability to appreciate that food. Really savor and chew and taste those flavors and see the difference it'll make. I promise you, you're going to take in much less of a quantity on things. And at the end of the day, your calculator is going to be happy. It makes a big difference. So higher protein, lower carbohydrates, be aware of the quantities on your nutrition label, and also, um, just be aware of your sugar and sodium numbers. Um, I also pulled, this is one of my favorite snacks. It doesn't even matter what it is, but I'll give you an example um, of things that I like to eat um, that are healthy snacks. Let me see, I wrote that right here. So this is an item that I found online. It doesn't even matter. It's called Dada, D-A-D-A, -A, cheesy cauliflower popcorn florets. So it emulates everything that our body doesn't love, you know, chips and salt and all those things. But there is two ingredients in this product, cauliflower and grapeseed oil. It is literally cauliflower. So I'm always creative in the things that I can find. I'm always happy to share my fun snacks with you. The bottom line is this, it doesn't have a lot of ingredients in it. Um, let's look at the nutrient labels. So serving size is only one. The servings per container is only one. The calories are 43 calories. The carbohydrates are 10.5 grams. So to me, this is a really clean product. This whole bag has 43 calories. It doesn't have a lot of carbohydrates um, and it's satisfying for me. So learning tricks of the trade of not this example, but how you can find snacks that kind of set you up for success more than failure. Um, I consider myself kind of a master of my daily calories. So when I wake up in the morning, I think about where my day's going. Am I gonna have a glass of wine? Am I going to a pizza parlor with my friends? So are there times of my day that maybe I'm gonna be taking in things and calories that maybe my body doesn't like as much? Then I plan. For breakfast, I will have eggs. I'm a huge believer in eggs. They're very, very high protein. I may make an omelet with some spinach, um, or um, I may put some chicken sausage in it or turkey bacon. I'll have some berries with it, blueberries. Berries are a really, really good source of nutrients. Um, I'm a big believer in vegetables. I'm a big believer in fruit because it comes from the earth. But I have to tell you that there are a lot of fruits that have a lot of sugar in them. Sugar means carbohydrates. That's what we learned today. Those two are tied together. So me personally, I love my berries and I love apples. There's, there's fruits that are good. If you look at some of the tropical fruits like pineapple and other fruits that are really excessive in their sugar, I personally would rather choose a glass of wine over that. So literally all day, every day, I'm making choices in my body because I wish we could have everything we can't of where those calories and those numbers are coming from. So I'll start off with a really big breakfast. For lunch, I'll have a salad, which we can talk about. And then for dinner, I'll have a couple pieces of pizza and a glass of wine, and then maybe a piece of dark chocolate or something like that. So again, I will exercise, which I do often. Burning those extra 100 or 200 calories will make a big difference in my calculator at the end of the day. So thinking about your day and where you're going to choose to uh, bring in things that maybe your body doesn't like so much, or just kind of what your day is going to look like. Um, 
Salads, for example, um, are wonderful. I have people come to me all the time and they say, I'm eating salads all the time. Why am I not losing weight? There's a big difference between eating a salad, which means I'll put spinach in it. I'll put every possible vegetable, great tomatoes and broccoli and cucumber. Um, I'll put my dressing on the side and I'll just dip it for flavor. And then I'll always add maybe a chicken or a turkey to it, I, I, you know, or tuna or salmon, whatever. I love my proteins. But there are people that say, well, I said, what kind of salad did you have? They'll say, well, I had a Caesar salad. A Caesar salad is iceberg lettuce, which is pretty much calorie and nutrient dense, um, croutons and cheese and creamy Caesar dressing. It's not healthy at all. So it's not that you can't have it. I love Caesar salad. I eat it all the time. But again, it's understanding that knowledge of what is in it. It is not a healthy salad. If I'm going out to eat and, or I'm eating at home and I'm craving a Caesar salad, what do I do? I put my Caesar dressing on the side and then I'll add in my vegetables with it. So at least I'm getting a Caesar salad, but I'm making it more nutrient dense. So there's all different ways that you can still eat the things that you love without feeling like you're not having your Caesar salad. So all those things that are just really healthy and nutrient dense, we wanna keep bringing into our body. Um, let's see, um, I love healthy meats. So there's controversy there, I get that. A lot of people say I'm a vegetarian. I so respect everybody and what you choose to put in your body. I eat healthy meats. So that means I eat very lean meats. I eat grass fed meats. I'm not gonna go out and just do um, a really unhealthy hamburger or a pork chop, which I'd love. I mean, there's just choices of meats that are better than others, but I eat a lot of meats and fish. Um, I'll often make, um, I'll buy like turkey meatballs or I'll make turkey meatballs. I'll eat them for breakfast. I'll make them for snacks. Um, I'll eat, um, a lot of hummus, which is made out of chickpea. I'll dip my carrots in there. I eat a lot of nut butters. So again, looking at your almond butter or your peanut butter, you know, as much as I love Jiffy, it's just packed with sugar. So if you're into nut butters, I would just go, if you're gonna go to the grocery store, look at your ingredient label. Is there sugar in there? There's only gonna be two or three ingredients, which is great, but I'd much rather you choose to buy a peanut butter and almond brother, but, butter that doesn't have sugar added. So that's another great fun goal when you're able to go into a grocery store is can you literally look at labels and find items that have no added sugar? You just wouldn't believe it. That's why our disease rates are so high. I mean, finding a spaghetti sauce with no sugar, finding a bread with no sugar, they are there and I can always help you. But when I tell you just finding those items is really challenging sometimes. So um, I'd much rather you choose red pasta sauces over white pasta sauces. I'd much rather you choose olive oils and balsamic vinegars over creamy Caesar dressings. That doesn't mean you can't have them, but they just, a tomato sauce is made of tomatoes. It's a lot healthier than like a fettuccine Alfredo sauce. So just understanding what's going into your body. Um, and how it's making you feel. All right, so let's talk about liquids. 22% um, of our calories come from liquids, the average American. Most people at the end of the day, you don't even think about your liquids. It's not something that you add in, but again, your body, your calculator counts every single thing that you put in your body. That means that um, if you're drinking a lot of apple juice or orange juice or liquids that have calories and sugars and artificial ingredients, your body sees it, knows it, understand it. It's going into your calculator. So just think about that and understand that. Um, I'm not saying you can have liquids, but me personally, I'd much rather eat an orange than drink a glass of orange juice. Or I'll put a little bit of orange juice and then put some water in it. So um, Getting water is key. Water is the most valuable thing you can put in your body. Most of us are not getting enough water. Most of us do walk around dehydrated. Um, we can get headaches. We can get nausea. We don't have nearly as much energy. So I can't encourage you enough to drink water. I drink cold water. I drink a ton of tea throughout the day. I'm a big believer in hot water with lemon and green teas. Um, and the only thing I would say about tea is if you are caffeine sensitive, I would be aware of if it has caffeine in it and I wouldn't do it, you know, in the afternoon or evening, but I drink a lot of hot tea. I infuse a lot of my waters. Sometimes I'll take basil or mint or berries and I'll put them in my water with some lime. There's all kinds of fun flavors to change up boring water. 
So I suggest you drink as much water as you can. They actually say half of your body weight in ounces, which is a massive amount. But water is like the oil to our cars. It flushes you out. It makes you feel fabulous. And it's just really critical. I always say before I go to the grocery store, before I sit down to a meal, I highly recommend you drinking a glass of water and eating a serving of vegetables. Sometimes I'll cut up some cucumber and eat five slices. Um, it's amazing how the water and the vegetables make you feel more full. You don't eat as much. You've got some nutrients and some hydration in your body. It just sets you up for success and it's kind of a trick of the trade. So um, try that sometime and see how it makes you feel. It also cuts the edge off of coming to a meal starving. I like to eat a lot of small meals throughout the day. Um, what happens to a lot of us is that we wait too long to eat and we just eat way too much and our stomach is not very big. So your stomach processes what it can and then the most rest of it is stored as fat. So eating small meals throughout the day really kind of triggers your stomach and your body to work. It, it increases your metabolism and it just helps you overall from not eating as much. So maybe one goal that you have when you wake up tomorrow morning is I'm going to try to eat five equal meals of 350 or 400 calories. Again, we're all different. We all take in a different amount, but it's really fun to five times throughout the day, eat just a smaller meal, see how that makes you feel. So you shouldn't wait till you're really hungry or really thirsty. You should be proactive long before then to receive the health benefits. So um, back to liquids, I just want you to assess what you're drinking and what you're doing. Um, I think one of the absolute worst things we could ever put in our body is soda. I know that everybody has their thing. We all have our things. I would never take soda away from anybody. Um, it's a really good question if diet soda or regular soda is better for you. Regular soda is just massively filled with sugar and calories. Diet soda is filled with artificial sweeteners like aspartame and other things that our body has no idea how to process. So I was eating sugarless gum so much back in the day and I couldn't figure out why I was bloated and gassy. And I realized that it was all those artificial sweeteners that were wreaking havoc on my body. So I would never tell you to take your soda away, but if you are a soda drinker, I would say, honestly, that's something you definitely portion control. See if you can cut it in half, give yourself permission to throw half a can away um, and maybe opt for the um, the diet as opposed to the regular, but that's a really tough call for me. So just be aware throughout your day. Are you taking in liquids? How is it making you feel? Um, and can you cut back some of your calories throughout the day from the liquids that you're choosing? Um, a lot of times I'll go to the store and I'll see like a vegetable drink that is filled with sugar. It's not healthy at all, but the marketers of the product make you feel like it's healthy. So again, that's looking at your labels. How many grams of sugar in there? How many things are in the calorie list? Is it telling you that it's a vegetable drink, but it's got six fruits and maybe one little bite of broccoli at the very end? So looking at the carbohydrates and the calories, if it's got a lot of sugar and a lot of fruit in it, probably the carbohydrate numbers are really high. So again, it's going back to eating from the earth five or less ingredients ideally. Can you get your fruits and vegetables in? How much can you really spend time in the outer aisles of the grocery store and in the things in your cabinet at home that are really um, simplified and not full of a lot of different ingredients? And if it is full of ingredients, that's where you portion control. You count out your items and you mindfully eat. Um, cancer feeds off of sugar. So even through these COVID rates and through cancer, it's amazing that the people in my life I know that have gotten sick or disease, if they're taking in a lot of sugar, they're a lot sicker. Um, sugar just attaches itself to, um, to cancer and to other sicknesses that we're going through. So just something to be aware of. Look at your ingredient label. Can you detect if you're taking in a lot of items with sugar and how many times is it in the label and can you reduce those quantities just a little bit. I often encourage my students to cut their Snickers bar into 20 pieces. Put it in the freezer and see for your snack. If you want your Snickers bar, take out three mini pieces, mindfully eat it, portion control it, let it last 10 minutes. It's amazing that you can get what you want but you've taken in an eighth of the calories and an eighth of the sugar. So finding really creative ways to really mindfully eat those things that you know your body is not gonna like. Um, let's see. 
So we're getting down to the end here, unfortunately. We've got about five minutes. If you all have any questions for me, um, I would say um, take something positive from what we've learned today that can really help you in future days. I can tell you that most of us are feeling stressed. Most of us are not going to the grocery store. So we are having to be creative with what we have in our house. The other thing I highly recommend is food prepping. I'm a massive believer in food preparation. So what does that mean? That means cooking five chicken breasts instead of one keeping them in the freezer, and then using them throughout the week. You can make a chicken taco with a whole wheat taco crust. You can um, put it in your omelet in the morning. I eat it with my eggs. You can put it in your salad. So think about what you're doing and how you can be effective. Keeping things in your freezer, keeping things in your refrigerator. Every time um, in the afternoons on Sunday, you'll find me prepping my vegetables. So I'll take grape tomatoes and cucumbers and all my different veggies that I love to eat, broccoli and cauliflower. And I put them in little Ziploc bags and my refrigerator is stocked with fruits and vegetables. So it's grab and go. If I know I'm going for a walk or if we are working out of an office right now or wherever we're going or we're just sitting in our house, you've got it all ready to go. It's when we don't have something and we are um, we're in a hurry that we go for something really unhealthy. So taking a little bit of time, an hour in your week to cook extra healthy foods that you can use. Um, there's something called salad in a jar. You can take glass mason jars and literally stock up so you can do your lettuce on the top, your meat next, your veggies next, your dressing on the bottom. You can keep it in the refrigerator for a week. You've got your salads, you can turn it over, shake it up, and you've got your salad in a jar. So um, a lot of times I'll put smoothies in the freezer. I'll take little plastic bags and I will put all of my vegetables and fruits and my protein powder, everything I need in a little plastic bag. And all I need to do is add some water and a blender and I've got a really nice healthy breakfast or snack. So taking time to just take your potato chips, count them out, put them in your bags, cut your little chocolate into pieces, any way that you can prep and portion control will really, really help set you up for success. And then you have really healthy things to grab and you don't feel guilty or horrible after you've taken in too much and there's nothing you can do about it. So uh, my summary statements would be to think positively Set yourself up for success and not failure. Set goals. Goal setting is so important. There is not a day that goes by that I don't have a goal. My goal is not going to be to exercise for five hours. My goal is going to be to drink an extra glass of water, eat an extra serving of vegetables, give myself permission to take a third off my plate at lunch and portion control. So there's all kinds of little things that you can do. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer any of those in the last few minutes that we have. Um, other than that, I will um, continue to talk for just a couple minutes in summary. Um, but whether it's the day before, if you're a planner, or it's the morning of, set those goals. I like to write a little note at night. So when I wake up in the morning, my goal is already there for me. Um, it could just be learning how to read a label. It could trying to learn what 30 code words of sugar is. Um, so there's lots of different fun things that you could do. Maybe it's limiting my carbohydrates to 200 grams one day, um, or just do a log of all the different nutrients I'm taking in my body. How many calories have I taken in today? How many carbohydrates? How many grams of sugar? And just empower yourself to be an educator. These days with technology, I can literally Google how many calories are in a banana and it gives it to me in five seconds. So I Google all the time. You can set yourself up with an app, but there's really simple ways just to get the information that you need by talking to Siri or Googling. Um, and just remember that small changes yield big results. It doesn't take a lot. It's all these little bitty things that will ultimately make you feel better. Um, so again, I wanna give you my contact information. Um, my name is Joy Milner. My organization, the nonprofit that I run is called Be Fit, F-I-T and Food Connection. Uh, my website is fitandfoodconnection.org and my email is info at fitandfoodconnection.org. You can always reach out to me for any reason. Um, but through this crisis, I'm encouraging you to make yourself feel good, do things that make you feel good, uh, live every day like it's your last, and really just enjoy every moment and just empower yourself with knowledge of the things that you're taking into your body. So thank you so much for joining me.
And uh, I wish you all just an amazing journey, a healthy journey, and um, just enjoy the rest of your day and reach out for anything.